I want to talk a little bit about the October surprise today. I have so much else I want to talk about too. I have at least five videos in the works right now that I'm, I'm doing simultaneously. More stuff on the translucent moon phenomenon and the holographic uh, sky system the, with the data from the physicist Dr. Claudia Albers. I know a lot of you wanted me to talk about her work. So I have more videos about that type of thing, the sun and the moon and what they're hiding and, and all of that coming up. I also have the veil is thin one, which is a really about supernatural stuff that has been going on in my home, in my life, in other people's lives. It is this, and this pertains to this video about what is this October surprise? What, how, what is going on? What Hebrew fall feasts are happening and what, what is the actual meaning of those? But I wanted to go ahead and do this October surprise one first because October's coming up on us like right now. So anyway, most of you have probably already seen Scotty Clark's new video about the celestial bodies and how he says the timeline is off for the Feast of Trumpets. I know a ton of people have seen it because it's gone viral. It has over a quarter of a million views in just the past week, probably because Feast of Trumpets and everybody was having the 9-11 thing going on. But he's begun to panic because it, it did take off so big. And you can see over here, he's done a follow-up, Scott's Thoughts, October Surprise and Beyond in caps Q&A because everybody, again, jumps to the conclusion, it must be the rapture. It's the rapture. He's saying it's the rapture the same way they did with the September 23rd, 2017 alignments that he discovered. So again, he wants to reiterate, he's not saying that the October surprise is the rapture. What he's saying is that the timelines are off and he's giving you the, the appropriate timeline for the feasts according to the way the celestial bodies move is October. It wasn't September. And he's absolutely right on. There is no doubt that all of our calendars and all of the observations of the feasts and all of that are off. They're off. According to God's clock, we have all these man-made calendars and stuff, but you can see how our calendar has been skewed because we have October should be eight, right? Because oct, octagon, eight sides, oct means eight, but no, October to us is the 10th month. And on and on. We know that Nov, November, means nine. Well, no, it's the 11th month to us. December, Desa, like in the metric system, decimeter, des, Desa is 10, a unit of 10. Well, it's our 12th month. And it's easy for us to see how our calendar got screwed up because July and August were inserted, which bumped us back two months on the Gregorian calendar for Julius Caesar and Augustus Caesar. So stuff that should make sense, you know, like octagon October should be eight is now 10. So everything's out of whack. But as far as for the Hebrew feast days, they're also way off. And it's caused a ton of heartbreak because people keep basing these ideas on these civil calendars and these he Jewish calendars that are observed today. When clearly if you've read the Bible and you've read the extra biblical texts like the book of Enoch, we know that these modern calendars aren't right. We were warned about this. Everybody's trying to, oh, it's the end of the Jubilee year. Oh, it's this year. It's 20, you know, it's this month. It's this. Well, we were warned in the actual book of Jubilees. Here is Jubilees 6, 32 through 38. For there will be those who assuredly make observations of the moon, how it disturbs the seasons and comes in from year to year, 10 days too soon. For this reason, the years will come upon them when they will disturb the order and make an abominable day the day of testimony and an unclean day a feast day. And they will confound all the days, the holy with the unclean and the unclean day with the holy. For they will go into air concerning the months and Sabbaths and feasts and jubilees. For this reason, I command and testify, testify to them, for after thy death, thy children will disturb them. It means you'll, you'll mess up the dates. The children of humans, of the Hebrews, will mess up the dates. But Jubilees says, and command thou the children of Israel that they observe the years according to this reckoning, 364 days. 
and these will constitute a complete year, and they will not disturb its time from its days and from its feasts, for everything will fall out in them according to their testimony, and they will not leave out any day nor disturb any feasts. But if they do neglect and do not observe them according to his commandment, then they will disturb all of their seasons and years and will be dislodged from this order. And all the children of Israel will forget and will not find the path of the years and will forget the new months and the seasons and the Sabbaths and will go wrong as to the order of the years. Nick Vanderlaan is uh, talking about this in his investigations. And I'll show more of his work and talk about him in just a second. But the key here is that the dates are wrong, the calendars are wrong, the, even the Jewish observations coming out of Israel and their calendars are wrong. And both of these brothers agree on that, although they're coming from two vastly different perspectives on the issue. Scott Clark is observing the celestial mechanics and the movement of celestial bodies and showing that the calendars don't match up with what they're supposed to match up with. Nick Vanderlaan is out in Israel and he is studying primary documents, the, the Qumran scrolls and what our forefathers recorded. So he's studying archaeological finds and he's found, wait a second, the Jewish feast days that we're being told from the, the quote unquote Jews in Israel don't match up with the ancient archaeological finds. And Scotty's saying they don't match up with the movement of the celestial bodies either. And I know there's always a ton of talk about how this relates to the rapture, rapture, rapture. But this isn't all about the rapture. We are not followers of the rapture. We're not servants of the rapture. We're servants of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are body. We are the body of Christ. So when he's ready to get out of here, we're going with him. But if he's going to be here working, we're here working because we are his body. We're the body of Christ. So please don't get heartbroken if you interpret some of this data as, you know, rapture times or rapture seasons or something like that, and it doesn't come to pass. Neither of these brothers claim that they know the date of the rapture or that these dates that they are uncovering in their research are the date of the rapture. So please hold your negative comments, allow them the space that they need to do their work. They need trial and error. They need to be able to discuss this openly so that we as the body of Christ can kick around these ideas. We can contribute. We can add our puzzle pieces. So please, that is a huge problem in the church right now. The accuser of the brethren. The word Satan literally translates the accuser of the brethren. And so many people think they are serving God when they are serving a spirit that all it wants to do is accuse the brethren uh, because they're not perfect. But newsflash, people, nobody's perfect. Nobody. If that's your standard, if you've set the bar that high, that if somebody's not perfect, then they can't be a servant of the Lord, then nobody can. Nobody. There was no perfect human besides Jesus Christ. There is no sinless human besides Jesus Christ. Even the apostle Paul, who wrote a huge portion of the Bible that we believe is spirit holy spirit inspired the apostle paul wrote in the bible that he himself while writing the bible he said the things that i want to do i don't do and the things that i hate i find myself doing therefore i find a law that sin dwells within my flesh and here's that bible verse if you want to look it up yourself romans 7 15 through 20. Paul is speaking to the Romans and he's explaining to them this battle between flesh and spirit, this battle between our carnal nature and what our spirit inside us, the Holy Spirit, wills to do. But we have to overcome our flesh. It's a constant battle. And humans are subject to error. We misinterpret things. We overlook things. We have this genetic contamination, the contamination of the human gene pool this dual nature since the original sin that evil dwells in us that's what he says he says he determines that sin dwells in me that's exactly what paul says in verse 19 for the good that i will to do i do not do but the evil i will not to do that i practice 
Now, if I do what I will not to do, it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. He's talking about that dual nature, that genetic contamination of our flesh, that evil dwells in us now. The Holy Spirit inside of us is always willing to do the perfect thing, the perfect will of God. We want to do what's right. We're at constant battle to do that. But we're in a battle not just against all of the evil spirits and the kingdom of Satan, but we're in a battle with our own flesh. And here's where Jesus reiterates that same point, that it is a genetic contamination. We do struggle against this. We do have a dual nature in John 8:44. Jesus himself is talking to the humans of that era who were out to get him and out to persecute him. And, you know, he always says, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. And he says here in verse 44, you belong to your father, the devil, and you want to carry out your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth, for there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks of his natural language, for he is a liar and the father of lies. So, you know, when we see our children instinctively lie when they're little bitty, I didn't get in the cookie jar. That's not of God. God's not a liar. But we have this battle of the flesh. And that's not to preach the hyper grace message. I totally don't believe in that. We should all be aspiring toward holiness. We should all esteem holiness instead of having these parades saying, no, we esteem sin and you're a horrible hater if you don't love sin and, and want to move in that direction. No, we should all esteem holiness and be moving in that direction. And these brothers, as well as most of us, are, but we're not perfect and no more then we should throw out all of the writings and letters of the Apostle Paul because he admits right here that he practices things that he, he knows are not right and he struggles with this. We should also not throw out all of the work and callings of all of our brothers and sisters who are all striving toward perfection and falling short. We hold fast to the truth and we keep moving forward. That's what we do. We learn as we go. So here we go. So this is the calendar that Nick is working on putting together from the Zadok priests. His contention is that God was never a moon worshiper, that that comes from the pagan religions, which we, we do see. And he says the true calendar was based on a solar calendar, not a moon or month calendar at all. So he's actually over there in Israel and he is pouring through these ancient texts, primary documents not commentaries, not secondhand, primary documents, trying to reconstruct the, record, the records of our ancestors. And he has discovered that many of these feast dates, many of these remembrances are lining up also from mid-September through October. So here's a good example of what he's found in the records of the temple scroll, where he says a lot of these feasts aren't just one event. We're kind of hodgepodging them together and observing them as you know one sort of one day or three day celebration or whatever when the ancient records recorded a completely different observance so he says like first fruits there are several first fruits and they're about 50 days apart like you'll start with the first fruits of barley and you count seven sabbaths later about 50 days and you'll have Pentecost, the covenant's first fruits of wheat. Then seven Sabbaths later again, you'll have the first fruits feast of new wine. Now that should be extremely important if you are looking out for a revival or a glorious outpouring of the Holy Spirit or what we call the end time harvest, which the Bible talks about will be bigger than the book of Acts type things going on on the earth. Jesus literally says, and greater things than I've done. Look at all the miracles, Josephus, extra biblical texts, historical texts from people outside of Christianity that aren't even included in the Bible, that lived and breathed and recorded what was going on in earth during that era, said that Jesus Christ did walk the earth and that if all of the, his miracles were written down in books, surely the books would fill the entire earth that's Josephus look it up you know we we believe Josephus and teach Josephus in all of the colleges and high schools when it comes to recording history of Caesar's Gallic Wars oh then he's a historian a trustworthy historian 
but he didn't just record other events in history during that era. He also recorded that Jesus Christ was real and was walking the earth at that time. So the hypocrisy of the school systems to ban certain certain records that Josephus recorded as a historian because they mentioned Jesus Christ actually was walking the earth at that time and yet teach something like Caesar's Gallic Wars in every university in the nation because they considered Josephus one of the greatest historians of the day and a reliable source for world history. Anyway, back to this. There were amazing, supernatural, interdimensional things happening on the earth when Jesus walked the earth, and he had authority over matter. In John 14, Jesus Christ says out of his own mouth that believers will do even greater things than he was doing. He says, believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or at least believe on the evidence of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing, and they will do even greater things than these, because I am going to be with the Father, and I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. Now, this is talking about the true body of Christ. The Father is in Jesus, and Jesus is in us. We have become one. This is talking about the people who embody the Holy Spirit. The name of Jesus isn't some witchcraft incantation that anybody can throw around. No, he's saying what you, you, my people, my body, those of you who embody my Holy Spirit, these signs will follow those who truly believe. You will ask and I will do it. And here's an example in Acts 19 of people who weren't actually part of the body of Christ, trying to throw around the name of Jesus to cast out evil spirits. Let's listen to what happened to them. Now there were some itinerant Jewish exorcists who tried to invoke the name of the Lord Jesus over those with evil spirits. They would say, I bind you by Jesus whom Paul proclaims. Seven sons of Siva, a Jewish chief priest, were doing this. Eventually, one of the evil spirits answered them, Jesus I know, and I know about Paul, but you, who are you? So it's not a religion. Not everybody sitting in a church pew has the Holy Spirit, is an actual member of the body of Christ, a living God, the Son of God, who has a multi-membered body animated on the earth by his Holy Spirit. And the kingdom of Satan knows. They know who we are. Why do you think we're targeted so much? They know who the true children of God are. And this evil spirit called them out. Eventually, one of the evil spirits answered them, Jesus, I know, and I know about Paul, but you, who are you? Then the man with the evil spirit jumped on them and overpowered them all. The attack was so violent that they ran out of the house naked and wounded. This became known to all the Jews and Greeks living in Ephesus, and fear came over all of them so that the name of the Lord Jesus was held in high honor. Now, I say all of this because I believe there is a surprise coming, and it doesn't necessarily have to be the rapture. Like I've talked about for years on this channel, I believe that before the rapture, there is an event coming, the likes of which this world has never seen. And Paul also wrote of that to the Romans in chapter 8. We know that the whole creation has been groaning together in the pains of childbirth until the present time. Romans 8 verse 19, the creation waits in eager expectation for the revelation of the sons of God. So there is a surprise coming. I don't know if it's an October surprise, but there's a surprise coming. And it doesn't necessarily have to be the rapture. And that's why I'm citing Nick's work here. So let's go back to his timeline about the feasts because they specifically mention the new wine and new oil. So clearly we haven't seen the manifestation of that yet. In fact, a lot of the dead churches basically teach the Bible as a lie because they say, oh, well, miracles aren't for, you know, they, they ended when Jesus ascended. When Jesus himself said, no, I'm going up to be with the Father so that I can pour out the Holy Spirit on you so that you can cover the earth and do greater things than I did in just one human flesh vessel 
and you can harvest the souls of the earth. So you go another 50 days forward after new wine and you have new oil, fresh oil. And everybody knows that these are used interchangeably again and again and again and again in the Holy Bible for the Holy Spirit and the anointing. So this is the spreadsheet you can find on Nick's website. I will put all of his links below to his YouTube channel, his website, and this video, and you can see. Now, I think this is, and this is a work in progress. He's, he's studying this stuff out. He's working hard on this, and it's a process of elimination. But right now, this is, this is sort of where he's got the timelines laid out. And I find this really interesting because he has the Festival of New Oil, between September 9th and September 14th. And you know, we had a ton of people feeling like they were hearing from God that something was coming on September 11th. Something was starting between September 9th to September 11th, you know, in this exact, in this exact timeline that he has found from the Zadok priests, the Qumran scrolls that he thinks would fall in this time period. So like I just showed you, there's clearly a misunderstanding that this is like a, a day event, like it's going to happen, boom, and, you know, snap your fingers. That's not what the scrolls say. The ancient records seem to indicate that it goes on for weeks and weeks and weeks in phases, which again mirrors the resurrection of Jesus Christ. I know we, we tend to have this like Easter story or whatever that it was like he came out of the tomb, he was resurrected and went up to heaven and that was it. But that isn't at all what the Bible says. We need to actually read the Holy Scriptures and read what they say because his ascension didn't happen the day he was resurrected from the dead. No, he was resurrected from the dead and then he spent weeks and weeks and weeks on the earth ministering after he rose from the dead, before he ascended. So here's just a timeline where you can look up these verses, you know, all the different verses in the Bible that show, you know, resurrection, and then the eight days, and then several weeks of ministry, and on the 40th day, as best as we can calculate right now, uh, that's when he ascended. So he had a ministry on earth after the resurrection. So if people are looking for the ascension, the rapture, to me, that that's not supported by Holy Scripture or not according to my understanding. And I'm nobody's guru. I'm just having a conversation here and trying to put some of these puzzle pieces together. So what we saw was that he came back to life, which is what revival is. He was revived. Then several weeks later is when he ascended. And all of this was witnessed by tons of eyewitnesses. That's what the New Testament is. It wasn't written by one human. It's a compilation of a whole bunch of eyewitness testimonies. I saw Jesus do this. I saw Jesus. That's why it's Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, the Romans, the Hebrews, you know, the Ephesians. He went city, city. It's, it's, it's a whole bunch of eyewitness testimony about what, what they saw firsthand. Right here, 1 Corinthians 15, 3, 3, 3 through 9. For what I received, I pass on to you as of first importance, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried and that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas and then to the twelve. After that, he appeared to more than 500 of the brothers and sisters at the same time, most of whom are still living, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James then to all of the apostles. And last of all, he appeared to me also as to one abnormally born. For I am the least of the apostles and do not even deserve to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. So this is Paul. And, you know, he had the road to Damascus experience where Jesus appeared to him, essentially glorified and said, Paul, Paul, his name was Saul. Then Saul, why do you persecute me? And opened his eyes. Acts 1, 3. After his suffering, he presented himself to them and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. Luke 24, 36. While they were still talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. He just materialized. He appeared amongst them. He seemed to be able to just move through walls if he wanted to and walk into the midst of them in John 20 on the evening of that first day of the week when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders. Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. After he said this, 
he showed them his hands and his side, and the disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. So clearly we have many weeks and lots of events before the ascension. So if the ascension of Christ is a mirror of the body of Christ being raptured, then there were events that happened before that. First, there was the revival. The spirit entered back into the body. And this says, at that moment, Matthew 27, starting at 51, at that moment, the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth quaked and the rocks were split. So there almost always seems to be an earthquake involved at the time of these events. I'm not totally going to go into that right now, but make a note of that. And I'll talk about that in the, in the future videos that are coming up. But this is the next part I want to point out. First, the veil's torn, right? The veil is lifted. We can see the spirit enters back into the body, revival. The veil is torn. We can see right into the Holy of Holies. When it talks about the rapture, it says, first the dead in Christ shall be raised, and then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them. Okay, so then it says, this happened. A lot of people think at the resurrection of Jesus Christ, it, it was just him, but it wasn't. It says that he went into the belly of the earth and he retrieved the souls of the righteous men of God from, from before Christ. There were people saved. He saved them. Jesus Christ himself saved them. It says the tombs broke open. At that moment, the tombs broke open and the bodies of many saints who had fallen asleep were raised. After Jesus' resurrection, when they had come out of the tombs, they entered into the holy city and appeared to many. These people raised from the dead went into the cities and showed themselves alive. They're just limitless. There are so many amazing correlations. Like I just read at the time of the crucifixion that there was an earthquake and the rock split. And then all these years later, Ron Wyatt claims he's a Christian archeologist who claims to have been exploring Zedekiah's cave that led into another cave underneath where Jesus Christ was crucified and found the Ark of the Covenant. Buried under layer after layer that he found a layer of wood as, as if it was crated or it was under some sort of table because this was the cave where they had hidden the temple artifacts. And Ron Wyatt, you'll have to go look up the story if you haven't already heard of it. Most of you probably already have. Uh, he says that four angels were there in the cave who spoke to him and said that they were saving this for a specific time and all of that kind of thing. It's an amazing story. But the correlation with that is if you've read the Old Testament and how the Ark of the Covenant, the mercy seat, had to be sprinkled with the blood of the sacrifice. So at the time uh, that Jesus Christ was sacrificed, the earth split open and his blood dripped down. And they're saying the Ark of the Covenant was being stored in a cave beneath where Jesus Christ was crucified, that his blood literally dripped onto the mercy seat, fulfilling that prophecy as well. It's just amazing. It truly is the greatest story ever told. I do not know why anybody wouldn't want to read the Bible. People read all these trashy half-wit novels that the mainstream secular world put out, and give each other Pulitzer Prizes for them, and then ban the Bible or mock the Bible. It's just ridiculous. But anyway, another correlation besides the earthquakes and things that we're seeing happen again in our generation is this three, this three hours of darkness. Remember how in the last video I was just talking about the three hours of darkness that just came over Siberia because there's some sort of object that seems to be eclipsing the sun? Well, the same type of phenomenon was witnessed at the crucifixion of Jesus Christ in Matthew 27. From noon until three in the afternoon, darkness came over all the land. At noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. That's Mark 15. Luke 23. It was now about noon and the darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. For the sun stopped shining and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. But anyway, I'm not going to go into all that right now. That's for another video at another time. I'm trying to keep these videos under like 14 hours so that somebody will actually watch them. So I'll leave that and we'll come back to it another time. 
and I believe that there will be a period of time that we minister in power, in the power of the Holy Spirit on the earth. And I believe that that will be simultaneous with some tremendous judgments because as I've said many times before, we're gently trying to wake people up, wake up, it's time to get up, like waking a child up for school, get up, it's time to get up. But there comes a time where there's gonna be a rude awakening because there are millions, billions of people that refuse to wake up. So, you know, it goes from us warning them for decades, it's time, it's time, it's time to wake up, wake up, the bridegroom cometh, and they won't wake up. So after the gentle nudging, then comes the nah, 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 the alarm. And now, now we're in the face, people are sounding the alarm, sounding the alarm, urgent, the bridegroom cometh, wake up, wake up. But beyond that, there's going to be a rude awakening where people are physically shaken. You know, when you actually grab somebody by the shoulders, snap out of it, snap out of it, wake up. There's going to be a rude awakening. And I hate it that people are going to have to go through that, but wake up, wake up now while we're gently trying to wake you up. So you can see at the same time of the festival of new oil, almost every single tribe of Israel, which is every ethnicity of humankind, every single tribe of Israel has been recorded some sort of Holocaust coinciding with the new oil. So in addition to the massive uptick in earthquakes and volcanic eruptions and stuff that we're seeing like that right now, you can see over here in column D that Nick has also started to log current events uh, such as Russia booting up for war, you know, the, the Russian military exercises and the war games off the coast of Syria and stuff like that. So you know, the, these are important correlations to, to make note of. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that definitely October 2018 is the beginning, the kickoff of the events, and is the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, and thus saith the Lord. I, I'm not saying that at all. I don't know. God hasn't told me that. But I can definitely tell you that I have experienced a spiritual shift. And right now, for the first time in oh, years, absolutely years, I am experiencing fresh new revelation. I mean, the Lord is downloading so much stuff. I can't even keep up. That's why I'm, I'm like, I'm five videos behind and I'm, I look like a Charlie Brown cartoon sitting here. I'm, I just am surrounded by notebooks and post-it notes and, and journals. And I mean, it's just last night I couldn't even sleep. It wasn't an uncomfortable. It was that it's just that God was just revealing and revealing and revealing stuff and i it was the most exciting night i couldn't believe it i was crying i'm like god it's been so long you know it's like the mary and martha thing all i want to do i'm busy doing this doing that serving this doing that but what i want to do is just sit at the feet of jesus and just listen to every word that comes out of his mouth it's the most exciting exhilarating euphoric you know, the mysteries of the universe, it's, it's, I live for it. I love it. And most of what I talk about on this channel is from my last major visitation, the things he said then. So it's been a while. It's been a real dry spell. And for those of you who follow my personal story, I have been in the battle of my life, it seems like for years. So when people, when prophets and stuff would say, oh, I hear the sound of, of abundant rain coming, I was like, I, you know, this is how I felt. I, and that was just to get to my morning coffee. <laughs> like that was every day. I kept the work up. I kept doing it, but it sure didn't feel like the abundance of rain. But what happened was like the storm blew in and it intensified, intensified going into the end of August and right into that like September 11th window. I was in a battle. It's, I mean, I was pinned. I was shackled down. I couldn't do any work for the Lord. I was, the world had me bound up, tied up. You know, I had to provide for my son and stuff. And I, I, they had me where I could not do the work of the Lord. And then boom, all of a sudden it shifted and everything opened up. I mean, you guys can see from the donations page, I went for the last two months, it was what, like 111 or $120 in donations for like 60 days. 
So that was like $60 a month in donations. And then all of a sudden, boom, my brothers and sisters stepped up and set me free and started contributing to, to the work. And uh, it's like, I wasn't alone, like a buoy in the ocean anymore. It was, you know, and at the very same time, I went from that dry spell feeling like, you know, my prayers were hitting the ceiling and falling back on my head to where just like, like it is now, like I said, there's so all I want to do. I could make 14 hour videos every day for three months and I still wouldn't be able to convey to you everything that God's revealing to me. It's so exciting. So I don't know if this is just something personal for my life, that it's my time of breakthrough, or if this is a season, like they're talking about the September, October season. And the reason that I'm hopeful that this is for everybody is because uh, I've seen it so much. So many people, like here's Inez. She does a lot of great teachings, but if you go back and just look at her monthly words, they're exactly in the pattern of what I've experienced through August, September, and going into October. So here she is two months ago. The sound of abundance of rain. I can hear the rain is coming, the move of God. And then she gives her dreams. So she's at least on the same wavelength that I am because I, that's exactly what, what I feel is coming. And then she moves into August, the prophetic word for August, fight, armor, and milk and honey that we're trying to get into the promised land. We're, we're right there. We're each getting ready to step into our destiny. You know, God has positioned people everywhere. We are everywhere. The body of Christ is everywhere. We spent so much time, I think, talking about the Illuminati and how they've infiltrated everything and they have operatives everywhere. They've got such a thorough network. But we can't forget that God is way ahead of them. God has us stationed everywhere. We are in position everywhere. We're at the gas stations. We're in the offices. We're in the schools. We're, we're everywhere. We're in the grocery stores. We're in the stock market. We're in the corporations. We're in the government. We, God has a network. The Illuminati network, that's nothing to be in awe of. They're an imposter. They're an impersonator. They're a, a weak replica of the body of Christ, what God is. God has us positioned. We are in position and we are ready to go. As soon as we hear the trumpet blow, as soon as we hear charge, it's on, it's game on. It reminds me of that one flash mob on the subway where, you know, we might just look like people riding a subway. We might just look like people all around the world, part of society. But when it's time for the saints to go marching in, Anyway, her words match up with exactly what I was going through. Like here's August. Okay. It's fight armor, milk and honey. And it was the most intense spiritual battle. I will tell you guys all about it in that video. I'm trying to get up the veil is thin right now, which I taped most of the clips from the end of August and beginning of September. And I say the dates and show the dates on the computer and I'll show you what I was going through. And you guys know for that whole month, 
I, I didn't, I wasn't able to even put a single video up. Okay. So I was in intense spiritual warfare and you guys know how I see numbers. You'll also see that in the veil stand video, uh, at 666 everywhere. So I knew, I knew I was in spiritual warfare. I knew what was happening and God was showing me 666, 666, 666, everywhere I looked. And then going into September was justice and new mantles and open doors. And that's when I managed to struggle free of the world and the body of Christ stepped in and helped me, helped me up off the ground. And these different doors started opening. And here it is, the very end of September. And it, it is, it's as if I have a new mantle. It God is pouring it out. I'm, it's so exciting to hear his voice again. And all of the stuff he's talking about is just fascinating. I can hardly wait to tell you guys. And then this is what she says. This is her next one. October rising. It's time to shine. That's her prophetic word for October. So that seems to go along with what Scotty's saying he sees in the in the celestial bodies. It seems to go along with what Nick has seen in the ancient archaeological finds. It seems to go along with what the Holy Spirit is speaking to modern day people. And if you guys don't know Inez, I'll put her links below. Please go over there and subscribe. She is a woman of God. And I've seen a lot of the true servants of God say the exact same things I'm hearing from God. I've even asked God uh, when it started, when he, I started hearing his voice again, and I was epiphany after epiphany, and I was, you know, it was these downloads again. And I said, is this it? God, is this it? Is this start? Are you starting to fill me up? I'm not like full up to overflowing yet, but I'm, you're filling me up. Like it's happening. Is this it? And uh, then I would click on YouTube and it would be like these, you know, prophetic words. And they'd say, they would say literally in the title, this is it. Message from God. This is it. <laughs> and just crazy stuff like that. But like I'm saying, you know, that's all subjective. So I'm still not saying like, thus saith the Lord. I'm just saying, I'm getting excited. And then I see this message from Mark Lang, our brother in Christ. And it just, boom, it flipped a switch in my brain. And I was like, oh, this is what God was talking about. So let me show you what he says and what that triggered. The first dream I had, there was a gathering and I was in the midst of this gathering. It was a diverse group of people, different people, different colors, different backgrounds, men and women. But we were all dressed alike. We were all dressed in warrior's uniform, warrior's fatigue like we were getting ready for battle. And we were all sitting in the midst of this gathering in this meeting place, this meeting area. And we got an unction in our spirit. It wasn't like we heard a voice, but it was like we got an unction in our spirit that we were given our instructions. We were given instructions on what we had to do. And in all total agreement, everyone that was there in this gathering, we all received our orders and we left two by two to carry out those orders. And while we were leaving out two by two to carry out those orders, we were rejoicing. Like whatever we were about to do was a good thing. Um, nobody was angry. Nobody was sad. Nobody was um, out for blood or, you know, evil. Everybody was rejoicing. Everybody was happy in the, to carry out the orders that we had just got. And we were all going out, like I said, two by two. Some there were... Um, brothers together some were co-ed you know men and women um there was but it was nothing of a sexual nature it wasn't nothing of a of a relationship or intimate relationship it was just uh they were just paired up two by two and everybody was going out i didn't see my partner who i was with but i had another dream several years ago maybe about 20 years ago where my partner came and did and joined me in battle but this was like 20 years ago, and that's another dream um, enough for another time when we actually did battle. And I saw my partner at that time, although I, I didn't even make out the face of my partner, but I knew that my partner was a female. So I'll just leave that there. Um, but that's not the other dream that I was referring to. The other dream that I wanted to talk about came about a week later, which was about maybe a couple of days ago. And again, I prayed on it saying, Lord, if it's your will for me to reveal it, I said, cause it doesn't really sound like something, you know, worth sharing. But again, I'm gonna be obedient and I'm just gonna just put it out there. So the first dream was a gathering of warriors and I was in the midst of those warriors. I was one of them, I was amongst the warriors. The second dream was another gathering 
it was a second gathering. This time we were like in some type of coliseum or stadium. And we were in, of course, I was I was high up in the in the rows, like a back, like a higher row, um, further back. I wasn't I wasn't in the front. Um, I was like further up towards the top um, in the stadium, and it was a huge gathering. And we were anticipating and waiting for something about that something that was about to happen in this gathering. So those were the two dreams that I had. I do believe they are connected to the rapture in the end time and something that is about to take place, something that's about to happen. So as always, all the links will be below and I will put titles on them so you'll know like which one is to his channel and stuff. I always do that, but there was like 10 or 15 links in the last video. So I just put all the links down there. So I'm sorry, that was probably confusing. I was just tired. So anyway, when he said that about the people lining up two by two and receiving their orders, all of a sudden the domino fell and it was like chick, 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 chick. every all of this stuff that the lord had shown me over 20 years started to fall in place like a like a rubik's cube you know it was like all just pieces and colors and all of a sudden it was like chick, 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 chick. and i was like oh and it suddenly brought back to my mind some dreams and visions that i have had years and years ago the first one was about the people lined up two by two and you can see here that I put this video up in November of 2016. So I'm not making this up just because this gentleman just posted his, his dream uh, this past week. This, I saw the same exact thing, only it was a little different. We were waiting to go out on stage two by two. And it was like an award ceremony or something. It, that was the feel of it anyway. We were about to be revealed is what it was. And we were behind a curtain, like one of those big heavy curtains, like at a theater. And we were all lined up back there, ready to go out on stage. And how he said we were all there waiting together. But then there came a time where we were given our assignments. How it was shown to me is while we were being prepared behind the curtain to go out and be recognized, there were these angels feverishly putting together this garment. It was a mantle. And I looked over and there were these two angels working on my mantle. And they weren't, I, I wouldn't say knitting or sewing, probably for lack of a better word, it was like weaving. They were weaving something together and weaving it into a garment, a mantle for me to put on to wear when I walked, when I stepped out on stage. And I looked at what they were making and on the back of it, it just said the word Jesus. And I looked at it and I said, oh, I want that. And they kind of chuckled. It, it was funny that they, they weren't all like solemn. They kind of chuckled and they said, we know you do <laughs> just like that we know you do and that was kind of about it for that i'll play you the clip in just a second but then this other one was exactly what this says it was about a sudden change or a transformation in the public eye it was about i was given a name you know how rhonda empson always gets the names and they have meaning that never happens to me but for some reason i had this series of three at the time that this happened and it happened and it was about this particular name it came out of nowhere and all of a sudden was all over social media. But now in hindsight, it's starting to make a lot more sense that the glory of God is going to rise upon his people. And I am by no means saying that this is all about me or you know, this revolves around me. I'm just saying uh, from my personal destiny, the orders that I received as our brother just put it in his prophetic dream, I did. It was a garment that just said Jesus. And then all of a sudden, right now, you guys saw the progression of videos of how I said God spoke to me and the Justin Bieber Instagram post and it, it just stuck and I could, I had to do it and I was obedient and it's the hashtag Jesus movement. So in hindsight, it's like, oh, so I didn't do this to some sort of self-fulfilling prophecy. I didn't understand at all. But now, hindsight being 2020, I believe I'm over the target. I believe this is part of what I'm called to do. And this is going to be a thing. And whatever that thing is that God put in your heart, now's the time. It's time. So anyway, just like him, 
here's the clip of the the two dreams that I had posted several years ago. Okay, this was my third uh, quick prophetic dream that had a name involved in it. Like I said, that never has never happened to me before, and I had like three this year that had had names that w were very specifically pointed out to me. Like, pay attention to this name, make a note of this name, and this one was there was a very famous person. I mean, really famous that just came on the scene out of nowhere, like out of nowhere. And it wasn't through the mainstream media. It was like, a, you know, a social media phenomenon and just came out of nowhere. And the name was Chris Lemke, I think. See, I lost the paper. I've been looking all over for the paper. I'll, if I find it and I'll read everything I wrote down so you guys can get it sort of firsthand. But I remember it was like Chris Lemke or Christopher Lemke. And um, the, the significance was he just came out of nowhere like no one had ever heard of him. And, uh, and just bam, hit social media and just took the world by storm. And, and that was it. That was the whole dream. So I looked up the names and of course, Chris, everybody knows is Christ and Lemke was like little lamb. So it, it made me think, you know, is it saying that, uh, you know, the body of Christ is about to what we're doing here, what all of us are doing, sharing the dreams and visions, sharing the revelations, the new technologies, everything that God's revealing right now. Um, are we about to be anointed? Is this going to be the outpouring of the Holy Spirit? And it's going to be seen. It's going to be seen on social media. Like everybody, everybody's going to see it. Uh, the, the reason I say that is because if you've watched any of my other videos that I had, the five other ones about receiving a glorified body while still here or semi glorified, like I could, you know, touch people and heal them. And uh, I, one time I was glowing in one of them. One time I could like lift off the ground, like there was no gravity, um, things like that. Uh, so, and then I had another one, uh, another separate dream that we were waiting behind a curtain, waiting to go out on stage, like out onto the stage. We were about to, it was almost like an award ceremony that we were about to be revealed. We were standing behind the curtain and the angels with me were desperately making this garment, this mantle for me to put on this Jesus, said Jesus on the back of it. And I was going to put it on and go out on stage. Here's that video that I was referencing. You can see I put it up in 2014. It's the five dreams that I had about the supernatural powers of the Holy Spirit uh, for whatever reason. Well, I mean, obviously for this reason, um, God showed me this series of visions of things like that. It was actually, it was like the book of Acts stuff. It set in modern times, but there it is. If you want to see those five, I'll put the link below again in the description box, because I just looked on my channel and when I checked my uploads, it only showed a year back. So this is from 2014. So I don't even know if anybody can access these if they tried. So I'll put the link below in the description box. And if you're interested in more depth on the supernatural powers and the outpouring of the Holy Spirit and what that might look like and all of that. This is the channel right here that you need to go to. Change is coming. This is the go-to gal for that. God speaks to her and shows her a ton of information and a lot of detail on, on that specific subject. Okay, and the last two I want to recommend if you're interested in that sort of thing are these videos like this one five teleportations caught on camera in real life amazing video footage okay the seven minute video i put up about a year ago and about a minute or two in i start with the christian testimonies these aren't dreams or visions these are real life christians that are already starting to experience these supernatural encounters uh, teleportations time slips where they jump back to right before an event happened, an event that would have caused them severe harm, or two cars merging together on the interstate and they go through each other and save the family's life. Several, actually, I think there's two or three of just that type of experience uh, in this video. But the point is this, this sort of thing is already going on. Now you're not gonna hear about this on CNN, <laughs> but it's here. And then this one. Supernatural Encounters, Angels, Jesus, Healing, Testimonies, Eyewitness Testimony. 
this is not just like healing testimonies like oh i went to a meeting they laid hands on i got better no that these are like really strange supernatural holy spirit encounters they are the exact type of stuff that we are talking about becoming commonplace so that's worth a watch if you're interested so all that being said I've had a fresh wind also to get back in and revamp the website and get the cards sent out and all of that. So I'm doing, I've done all that. I've been working on the website. Everything's been revamped. And here's the update on the hashtag Jesus cards. It's time for me to send them out. So if you feel led, like you're a part of this mission, like this same thing here that I'm a part of, then it, please contact me. Please contribute to this mission. This doesn't cost anything. The these cards are already paid for through the generosity of the body of Christ, and so is the postage. I will mail these out for free. So you can be a part of this thing that we're building and we're doing to show Jesus we love him and to win the lost in these last days. And I have a sneaking suspicion that this may not look like much now, but when the move of God starts, we're going to be ready. People are going to be looking. They're going to be looking for answers, and we're here. It's like that old Field of Dreams movie. If you build it, they will come. And God has told me to build this thing, and I know there's a reason. And I believe that if we build this, when this move of God begins, they will come. So here's the quick update on those cards and the email addresses where you can contact me to get your package of free cards to take part in this movement. And of course, if anybody out there is financially blessed and they still want to contribute financially, it is much appreciated because I would love to be able to put way more time into this than I, than I currently can. So I just cannot thank everybody enough who has donated this past week, well, at any time, <laughs> to my life, to my ministry. I appreciate all of it. But again, this past week, I've seen a huge surge in support. You know, I've only, you know, two, three, four times in the last 10, 15 years mentioned my donation sites or whatever, my PayPal me or GoFundMe or anything like that uh, during my videos. But I did this past week and you guys, I just, nope, I'm not going to cry this time. <laughs> I'm not going to cry like I did in the last video. I'm just going to say thank you so much because you did that. I was I paid up all the website fees, so that's good for another year. I uh, And I spent all day yesterday revamping the website to add the, the hashtag Jesus movement and all of that. And now I have the money to mail all of these cards out for free. There are already people who have contacted me with their addresses who want to take part in this mission. And they've been waiting on these cards, but I said I would do it for free. And I have, you know, I just, you guys know, I just haven't had the money with those back to school time. And they cut all my website, you know, after the Isaac Cappy thing came out, they just went through and just whacked all of my videos and knocked me down to $100 a month in income. So I had to take on three jobs at back to school time. I couldn't even post a video for a full month. I've been so busy, but I'm back at it. Thank you to all of you. You know, there is no doubt that your reward is exactly equivalent to my reward in any of this because you you make it possible. It, it was impossible for me to do anything except nose to the grindstone working in the world to support my child. Had all of you not stepped up and literally just took the handcuffs off me. You literally burned the bonds off of me that were keeping me tied up so that I could not serve the Lord. And so now here we are. We're free. Let's do this thing. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. So this is the deal. I already bought all of these cards, thousands and thousands and thousands of these cards, and I will mail them out just in packs of 50 for free to anybody who wants them, who wants to take part in this movement. Now, when I put the last video up about these, uh, asking people to vote, it was split pretty evenly, and I couldn't decide either. Uh, because there really are, you know, there's so many different types of people and everything. And I think some of them, you know, more in the patriot movements will be reached by, by the other style. And that might motivate them better. But this style is gorgeous and everybody liked it too. So um, I got both.
I changed some of the writing on the backs of each of the cards to reflect the, all of the updates that I've done to the website that hopefully, out of curiosity, I left it ambiguous enough that people, when they find these, they'll be like, what on earth is this about? And they'll check that, you know, curiosity killed the cat. You know, sometimes if you leave some stuff to the imagination, that draws people more. So hopefully they'll be curious and they'll come hear what we have to say. So those are the two designs you can choose from. All you have to do is just email the address that you want me to send them to. This is the first one. This is more geared towards the Patriots. This is the front. And this is the back. And this is the second one. That's the front. And that's the back. And I will send you a packet of 50 in either design you want, or if you want 50 of each design, I'll do that. I just don't want to send them out in giant orders too many at a time starting off because I've been doing this a long time and I've learned that a lot of times people have great intentions but they don't follow through and when you're sending out boxes of 500 cards at $50 and they, they end up just sitting on somebody's dresser and being wasted then that's you know I can't afford that I can't afford to just waste thousands of dollars plus a box of cards is heavy and it costs a lot to ship this way at 50 or 100 cards I can send them first class so it's only going to be you know a couple of bucks to send each package out and then if you want more contact me and I will definitely give you more but I, I think also it doesn't overwhelm people who are new to taking part in a movement or a ministry that they really only have to get rid of 50 cards <laughs> So they don't feel like, I don't know a thousand people, what am I supposed to do with all this? They really only have to get rid of 50 cards and you don't even have to hand them to people. I mean, that would be great. It would be great if we were brave enough and bold enough to just walk up to people and, and just say, hey, Jesus loves you. Can I give you something? You know, that would be fantastic. But if that's not you right now, you can at least do something. If you tip your waiter or your waitress, leave it under the money. You know, if you eat at the Chinese buffet, leave one on the little cookie tray they give you. If you're in the common areas on your college campus, whether it's in your dorm, leave one laying on the table down in the TV, TV room. Leave a couple. If you're at the student center or the computer labs, leave them laying there so people find them. They'll be like, what's this? extreme reality check find out what the government's hiding like <laughs> they might just out of curiosity even if they're not super spiritual and looking for salvation they might out of curiosity say what is this all about and ch and type it in especially if you're on the the school computers where they're not worried about a virus or whatever they might just type it in and have a look you don't know it's worth a shot if you're at the library, a public library, leave it laying on the table. Or if you're reading a book, use it as a bookmark and stick it in the book, just stick it out a little bit so somebody else can find it. Because those of you who have walked with the Lord for any amount of time and know how the Holy Spirit works, if God wants someone to find it, they'll find it. They'll just walk in off the street and want to check out that exact book. You know, that's how God works. All we have to do is our part and let the Holy Spirit do the rest. Another one that we see all the time is, you know how UNICEF does and all these places, they'll stand outside the subway stations if you're in a bigger city and they'll pass out cards at the subway station. You could buzz through 50 like that. And who cares if they walk down the road and toss it right in the trash? You tried. Maybe for every 10 that get thrown away, one will check it out. But I know this much for sure. For at least a few seconds that day, they will think of Jesus because his name will be right in their face when they get that card. And that's saying something because there is power in the name of Jesus. You know it's true. And if you go to the hashtag Jesus Testimonies page and you listen to all of these diverse people who came out of the world and out of everything you can imagine into salvation in Jesus Christ, every one of them have a story like this. One person made a difference in their life. One person. I personally know a pastor who was a hardcore new ager and he had a lot of spiritual oppression and stuff. And I shouldn't laugh about it because his story about what he went through demonically was, was horrible. 
He was a young ex-military guy stumbling through the streets drunk and a flyer that had been either passed out and thrown away or, or had been stapled to a you know power pole and had blown off or whatever, but it was just blowing down the road and came up and blew onto his leg and stuck on his leg and he picked it up and it was about a deliverance ministry. It was about a conference and he was just desperate enough that he stumbled in there and he talked to these pastors and they spent hours in prayer and deliverance over him, changed his life. He received the Holy Spirit and he is a pastor today, today, still decades and decades later, he's still serving the Lord Jesus Christ. So I don't know if the person who handed that flyer out that day knew what a difference they made in somebody's life, or I don't even know if the person who threw the flyer away onto the ground knew what a difference they made in somebody's life, but God handled it. And I know the link to this salvation prayer, it rolls over every 10,000 hits or whatever, so you can never see the full total. But I know for a fact, in the last six months or so, it's rolled over at least four times. So at least 40,000, 50,000 people this year have gone and clicked on that page. And if even one of those people took the time to cry out to God from their bedroom or wherever they were, then it's all been worth it. My entire life has been worth it. You know, if all of our lives combined only save one soul from eternal damnation, from eternal hell, then it's all been worth it. All of it that all of us have been through is worth it. It only takes saving one person to be a hero. Nobody goes to the firefighters or the whole fire department and says, you only saved one baby this year. When a firefighter or an entire fire department goes in somewhere and they bring out one baby, they are heroes. They are heroes forever because they did something because they went in there and they saved that child, they will be heroes forever. Nobody says, oh, well, you didn't go into the fire and pull out 16 million people. No, nobody looks at it that way. No, because you used your life to go in there and save somebody. That's what matters. So don't worry about how many other souls or how many people throw them away or how many, it doesn't matter. God will handle it. You do your part. Try every day to save one. Now is the time. There isn't any more time. We have to do this. It's on fire. It's burning to the ground. We have to go in and save them. I'm going in. With or without you, I'm going in after them. Please come with me. Please help. If we save one, it's enough but let's go big. Let's try to save as many as we can until it falls down around us. Let's try to save as many as we can. And make no mistake, we are at war. This is a culture war. This is real. There is evil in the world. And if we don't stand up and defend our God, what's the old cliche? The only thing it takes for evil to prosper is that good people do nothing. So I'm asking you, one person can't do this alone. I can't do this alone. I don't have any resources except you, the, my brothers and sisters, the body of Christ, which are all of the resources any of us need if we unite. God has put the resources into his body. And the move of God that we're all praying for is us. The move of God on earth is exactly equivalent to the size of the movement of the body of Christ. And we have to join forces. I can't just go buy billboards. I, I don't have those kind of resources. But some of you out there, God has blessed with resources. If you can do something big, do big. Go big for God. If you can do something small, do something small. Whatever you can do, just join forces with us. Let's get Jesus trending again. They might say he's taboo, but he's not taboo. We're going to make taboo cool again. Remember this? This is when I ran the hashtag Jesus uh, t-shirts on Facebook and they pulled the ad down. Something as simple as the name of Jesus 
you know, they might have their algorithms and their control and their Hitler like censorship and the, they might be able to take this t-shirt off of Facebook, but they can't take this t-shirt off of your body. We can rebel. We can launch a revolution. We do not consent. We can launch a peaceful revolution for Jesus Christ. And we can go person to person. Remember the old days when we all didn't have our faces glued to our phones? When we actually spoke to one another, we can do this. You can wear Jesus right on your chest. You can take one of these cards and hand it directly to another human. And we can fight back. We can tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, hashtagging Jesus online, hashtagging Jesus online. We can show them that we are here. And we are not just millions strong, we are billions strong. And we are not going to lay down and take it. We're not going to take it anymore. Enough is enough. Now, this is our time. This is the time. This is what we've been praying for. It's here, but we have to rise up and do it. This is the clarion call, people. Yeah! <laughs>